I'm Nesta Davis and I'm one of the bookbinding tutors at City Lit um, at our Education College in London. What I'm going to show you today is um, how to make a very simple bookbinding with quite a lot of potential to it. And it's something that you could do if you haven't done any bookbinding at all. And if you have, it's still interesting. One thing that's really important in bookbinding is the grain direction of the paper. But this thicker paper is usually quite easy to, to work out. But you need to make sure that the grain direction runs up the height, the height of your book. Everything that you make, everything that you use needs to. I'm just going to show you how to fold this to make the zigzag across the back. The first thing you need to do is to fold it in half. What I'm folding it in half with is a bone folder, um, which is really useful, um, and you can just get a really sharp crease with that. If you haven't got a bone, um, a letter opener or just your thumb is absolutely fine. Then you need to fold it in half again, coming back up to that central fold like that. Okay. And then in half again, the other side. So the, your paper looks like that, okay? These two pieces are the bits that are going to be put down on the inside of the board here, there and there. So the bit that the zigzag's going to be made out of is from these central parts here. Okay, so we're just going to work on one side first of all, and I'll try and keep this so that it's fairly easy to see. That's the centre fold there. I'm going to just crease this back the other way. That's why it's good to be able to crease it quite sharply. And just if you can see, I'm just going to fold that over like that and make it as accurate as you can just onto that crease there. You put your hand underneath just to make that sharp. And crease it down. So effectively, you've folded that in half. You need to do that again now. Just fold that back the other way. That's still the centre fold there. And as accurately as you can, fold that back down on there. Try and keep it as straight and as sharp as you possibly can. This is quite good paper to use, it's quite handy. That goes like that. And then your last one here, this is already folded the right way. This comes down and again, on there like that. So that's half the zigzags done. You need to do the same with the other side there now. So there you are. When you've got them all folded, it should be um, relatively straight. Okay, so now you've got the backbone complete, you need to sew the sections into the folds here. And um, you can have as many folds, pages folded as you like in your sections. But if you have too many, um, they're not going to fit very neatly into that V shape there. Um, so don't go mad. Um, I've got th um, three and two here. These are some pictures of my sons that he's drawn for me. And don't just sew through one because you'll find it will rip. So make sure you've got at least two pages here. Um, I'm going to pierce some holes through here and sew it through here and I've got um, a sort of a template here which is another sheet of A4 paper which I've got in a different colour just to show you and I'm going to mark on here where the holes should go. Firstly one in the middle so it'll be about 105 there in the middle and then if you have about move about um, six centimetres, 60 millimetres away on each side. That works fine. And I'm going to put this into the first section, like that. There. And I'm using an awl to make holes, but you could just as easily use the needle that you're going to use. So I'm just going to pierce that. Don't make the hole too big if you've got one of these thick awls. Thick awls. So once the needle's threaded, um, you need to, you're going to sew through these three holes here. So you go through from the outside. I've re-clipped the section there just to help me. Through from the outside, leave enough for you to tie a knot. 
and then go into one of the other holes. It doesn't matter which hole you go into. Then go right up to the other one, not back through the middle, but right up to the other hole there and back down through. Just pull that through. Out through there and then back down through the middle hole. Be very careful that you don't split the thread as you come through. So make sure that you can move the other one. You come through like that. There we go. And the important thing is to come through so that the centre thread runs across the other two so that these are like either side of the centre one. And take that out of the way. Pull that tight and then tie a knot once, twice across the centre. If you want to make it into a bow, of course you can. But make sure it's knotted first. So once that first section is in, you carry on with the other two. Okay, so that's that. Um, we can put that aside for a minute, and the next thing you need to do is cover the boards. So here, the two pieces of uh, paper that we're going to cover the boards with, remember that the grain runs that way on them. So the best thing to do is to keep it um, as damp free as possible if you possibly can and uh, just get the thing to stick. So what we're going to do is um, just put a little bit of PVA on the board like that in the middle just to help hold it. Okay, Put the paper down like that and just centre that like that. And just remember that you need this sort of amount round it. Now, we have not too much PVA. And if you just hold the brush with your hand like that and your thumb on the top and hold this quite firmly, you can just stipple round the edge like that. What, so what you're gluing is uh, the edge of the paper that extends past the board and just the very edge of the board as well. Um, and that should be stuck on enough. Because you've gone over both, uh, that should be stuck on enough really just to hold it, to stop it dropping off. Um, and then I'm going to cut the corners here and I'm not going to cut them, I'm going to cut them at 45 degrees but I'm not going to cut them right up close to that corner there. I'm going to cut them a little way away and it's just practice this unfortunately but what you're looking for is the thickness of the board one and a half times so I'm going to say this is about 1.5 board I'm going to cut them that far away and then just holding it over here to the table do the top and bottom first just um, hold it up with your hand there and just with your thumb just push it over and make sure the air bubbles out make sure there's no air bubbles along here if you're using very fine or very thick paper you're going to have to adjust your pushing accordingly try not to stretch the thin paper and try and you need to be quite firm with thicker paper so that it creases neatly what you're going to do now is um, nick in the corners at the top with your thumb like that in there and in there and bring it over like that We've got everything now, we've got the two boards covered and the book itself, uh, Magnum Opus. Uh, so now we're going to put the boards onto the book and it's all finished. And I think the easiest way to do this is to glue the board. Um, so, here we go again. And you just need to make sure doing it this way that you don't go mad with glue near the edge of the board because there is going to be um, a small area of the board that overhangs, that is, is slightly bigger than the book. We've got the board, I'm going to put it like that, horizontally, because it's easier to, to sight something horizontally. Open this out and just, if you put your fingers here, your hands here and your fingers on top and just Sight that down so that you have an equal amount showing round there. You just have to hope that you've got an equal amount showing at the back too. Slide that down slightly like that. Bring it back and check. That looks fine. So you're looking for um, a gap or um, an overhang all the way around which is about the same and if anything um, slightly bigger at the back. 
Now I've just placed that on there and it needs to be secured. So I'm just going to rub that down with the bone folder and I'm just going to do that through some scrap paper so that you don't get the sort of slightly greasy, waxy mark you get from rubbing something directly with the paper. Okay, and that's going to go onto a board here for a moment. I've got some blotting paper here just to take the dampness away. Put that there. And I'm just going to put another board on top of it. And you can put a weight on top of that if you've got one too, just for a couple of minutes. Um, not too long, just a couple of minutes, and then you can put the other board on. Okay, so, so then once you've got the second board, once the first board is attached and the second board is glued, you put the um, end paper down again in exactly the same way, but this time I suggest you just tack it very lightly so that when you bring, bring it back like that, oops, there you go, you can just, I'm holding it quite lightly so that when I look at this like that, I can just check that it's actually in the right position, that it's not too far back or too far forward in relation to the first board that I put on. So there you are, that's the second one. And I'm just going to, again, I'm going to just, now I'm, I'm happy with it, the position it's in, I'm just going to make sure it stays in it by rubbing it down and giving it a couple of minutes as the first one under the boards there. And actually, once you've got that on, it's a good idea to dry them out with some blotting paper, like that. And so then the, the second board goes down in the same way as the first board, with some blotting paper and a pressing board on it, like that. And uh, it's a good idea to do one board at a time, make sure that's completely dry before you put the other one on. Um, when the second side is done, um, that's it. This is the end result. There we go. All ready to go. Pictures inside, like that. There we go. Or, of course, you can make it any shape or size you like, but this one is just um, an A5 size for simplicity.